Hi and welcome to this episode of John's Motorcycle Rescue and Review. Today I am going to be showing you how to service a 1980 Honda CB900 Custom. This service is really a standard service. It's the same one that I do on all of my bikes. doesn't matter if they're new or old, but we check over the whole bike. We, we change the oil and filter. We're going to change the oil in the transfer case. We're going to change the gear oil in the rear. But we're going to just go over from front to back. We'll also check the charging system on the bike. Make sure that that's healthy. We'll look at the air filter. Uh, we'll look at our brakes. We'll look at you know all the lights, the horn, and we just want to make sure that everything is running, driving, and functioning like it should. All of these services are best performed on the center stand of the bike. Just as a note, when I got this bike, it did not have a center stand, so I'm having to kind of uh, work around that a little bit. It just makes the jobs a little bit more involved. Uh, not really a big deal though. I just thought this would be a nice video to go over and show you if you've also got a CB900 Custom, you know, just kind of how to quickly go through it and service it and make sure your bike is ready to rock for the riding season. All right, let's get to work. And what I'm going to be doing first is just an oil change on the bike. And this is a very, very straightforward job. It really only requires uh, a 17 millimeter socket. And you've got a drain bolt under the engine and you've also got one at the front of the engine. But we'll go ahead and uh, go through the process of changing the oil here. I've driven the bike around the block, so it is warmed up. This is the drain bolt on the front of the engine. You can see it's on the filter housing, oil filter housing. And so I'm just going to loosen that And get an oil pan under there quick. <sighs> Not quick enough. The way that it's set up, the oil just gets a little bit on the exhaust, and there's really not a whole lot to do about that. So, and this is hot. Let me use something different here. Just letting that drain a little bit. All right, that's the oil filter housing off. And right here is a 17 millimeter drain bolt as well. I have loosened it already, so I should be able to remove that with my fingers here. And we'll let the oil drain out. I'm using the stock Honda oil filter, and I'm going to use a new O-ring here for the filter housing. And I usually put a little bit of grease in that groove there to make sure the O-ring sticks like it should and then a little bit of fresh oil on the O-ring itself to get a good seal. We're also going to put a new seal on the bolt that goes through the oil filter. And I actually stretch out the O-ring a little bit uh, so that it slides on and doesn't damage it when it goes over the threads of the bolt. And then we insert that through the oil filter housing, kind of push it up through till it pops into place. You can feel it pop into place. Next thing that goes on is the spring. And after that, the washer. And those often go missing. And then we'll also put the oil filter itself in, just making sure everything in there is clean. Sometimes they're a bear to seat. And once it's past the threads, it's fully seated. I'm going to put a little bit of fresh oil around the oil seal. And it doesn't have to be much, just enough to wet the surface. The next thing we're going to do is line up the tab on the top of the oil filter housing with the notch on top of the engine. And I always start these by hand, uh, just because if you cross thread them, you can they're a real bear. So I always try to just uh, gently thread them by hand first and get them started. Once they're started, I'll use a wrench, but it's just critical to be real gentle here. You don't want to force anything. And as you tighten it, that tab is going to slide into the notch and you just want to make sure it, it slides in and doesn't get hung up on one of the sides. And then torquing it down to the proper torque. 
the oil filter bolt torque should be between 20 and 23 foot-pounds. And I've reinstalled the drain plug here with, I made sure that the washer was in good condition. The engine oil drain plug torque should be between 25 and 29 foot-pounds. The next step is filling the crankcase with 3.7 quarts of motorcycle specific 10W40 oil. Once that's done, I started the bike up and let it run for several minutes, and then I turned it off and let it sit for several minutes. And in this step, I'm actually checking the oil level. I'm holding the bike upright and wiping off the dipstick. And what I'm going to do is reinsert that and let it sit for a couple of seconds. You don't actually screw the dipstick in. You just let it sit all the way down and then you pull it back out and check the oil level. And it's a little bit low on the dipstick. I'll actually add a little bit and make sure it's up to the top line. And while I'm doing that, I will add a little bit, then start the bike and then I'll let it sit and double check until my oil level is finalized towards the top end of the dipstick. The next thing we're going to do is change the oil in the transfer case. And so what I'm going to do first is with an impact driver, I'm actually going to remove the chrome cover from the transfer case. And this is just held on by two Phillips head screws the transfer case has three plugs. It's got a drain plug in the bottom, it's got an oil level plug in the side, and it has a fill plug on the top. And you always want to remove your oil level plug and fill plug first, just to ensure that when you drain the oil out, you can get new oil back in. So the first thing I'm going to do is loosen my fill plug, and that is done with a flathead screwdriver. With a 12 millimeter socket, I'm going to loosen the oil level plug. And then with a 10 millimeter socket, I am going to loosen the drain plug. And again, you want to always loosen your oil level and fill plugs first. And once the drain plugs are removed, we'll check the washers on there and make sure that they are in good condition. But you want to Loosen this and then let it drain. This The gear oil takes a long time to drain. And so I usually let it drain for about 45 minutes to an hour just to uh, make sure it's completely and thoroughly empty. And I'll remove the fill plug just to let the air go through there easier and let it drain easier. The next step here, once everything is drained, is to reinstall the drain plug and we just want to make sure that that washer is good and clean and in good condition. If not, we should replace that with a new one. I'm going to gently tighten that down with the wrench. And you don't want to be a beast and strip it out. So The drain plug torque should be between 12 and 14 foot-pounds. The next step here is filling the transfer case until it comes out of the fill level hole. And then because this is not on the center stand, I will do that and then I will actually stand the bike upright and fill it a little bit more until it comes out the hole again and then replace the plug. I'm using Lucas 8090 weight gear oil to fill the transfer case here. The capacity is about 600 cc's of oil which is about 20.4 ounces. And again, you just want to fill it until the oil starts to come out of the oil level hole. Once the oil started coming out of the oil level hole on the side stand, I stood it up. And right now I'm just putting the oil in with the bike held upright until it comes out of the oil level hole. And now I'm just going to replace the bolt. And I've made sure that the washer is in good condition there. So I'm replacing that. And then grabbing the wrench. And I will torque that down. 
Again, you want to be snug here, but you don't have to make it gorilla tight. And then we'll reinstall the oil fill cap. And after that, we will reinstall the chrome cover. Once that's done, we will wipe everything down, and that completes servicing the transfer case on a CB900 Custom. The next thing we're going to do is service the rear of the bike. And so with a 17 millimeter socket, I am removing the oil fill plug. With a 10 millimeter socket, I am removing the drain plug. We'll check the washers and the O-ring and make sure everything is in good condition when we do this. But we'll let the oil drain for about 45 minutes. Once that's done, I have reinstalled the drain plug and I have filled the rear with 8090 gear oil and I filled it until the gear oil came out of the oil fill plug while the bike was upright. So now I'm reinstalling the oil fill plug and I'm tightening that back down and we are done with the service on the rear of the bike. And you want to be careful not to over tighten the fill plug here. Just snug it down good, it doesn't have to be beastly tight. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here is look at the front wheel on the bike. And uh, what I'm going to do is just look at the tire. I'm going to inspect it. I'm looking for any dry rot on the sides. And I'll check out both sides. Uh, that actually looks really good. Uh, for this, we're actually going to use a tread depth gauge and a good tire pressure gauge to check out the bike. And with the tread depth gauge, I'm gonna measure now the depth of the tire, tread depth. And that is right at 430 seconds on the front tire. I'm gonna measure it in a different spot just to double check. And once again, I'm getting 430 seconds on the tread depth. While we're here, we're going to look at the valve stem. We're gonna check for dry rot. We're gonna look at each side, bend it over a little bit, see if there's any dry rot cracks. That looks good. And I'm gonna check the tire pressure. This bike should be running 32 PSI of pressure in the front tire. And that is perfect. 32 PSI. We're also gonna look at our brake pads. And these are basically brand new brake pads looking through here. And the brake pad thickness is honestly right around 630 seconds for the front brake pads. So those look good. The next thing we're going to look at is the forks and just feel if there's any oil residue on either one of these and there's not. Uh, I've run the bike and it actually runs great. There's, there's, I don't have any suspicions about something being wrong with the front forks. So that looks good. Moving on to the rear wheel. As you can see, this is a brand new Dunlop tire. It's a D404, as I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to measure the tread depth on there and we'll mark that down. And the tread depth on this is actually 830 seconds. So that, that has a lot of life left in it. Um, I'm looking at the valve stem now. This is a new valve stem. And if you're up to 200 pounds uh, of, of riding weight on the bike, they recommend running this at 32 PSI. Uh, if you're over that, uh, up to the bike's limit, they recommend 40 PSI. And you can kind of set, depending on how much you weigh, you can kind of set the bike in between those two numbers, depending on your load. And I'm just gonna measure And I've got it set at 36 PSI in the back. So that looks good. The rear brake fluid reservoir is behind the side cover, just below the seat here on the CB900 Custom. And we can see the brake fluid is clear. It has just been replaced. And as I stand the bike upright, 
it is towards the upper level there, uh, which is just where I want it, it's between those lines. Okay, the rear brakes are just in here, and really what I had to do to measure them was just pull these two 12 millimeter bolts, pull those out, pop the caliper off, and look at the pads. Pad thickness on there was 630 seconds, so those are also like brand new. So the brakes look good. I did replace the brake fluid in the bike, both front and rear. So that has been bled out. There's no air in the system. It's all fresh fluid. My functionality uh, is, is good on my brakes. As I bring the bike in and out of the garage, I'm not feeling any type of hang up on the brakes. The calipers aren't hanging up at all. So that's great. Uh, if, if a bike is hard to push in and out of the garage before you ride it, you want to free up those calipers because if not, what's going to happen as soon as you get out on the road, that caliper could lock up on you. It could warp your rotor. It could cause all sorts of damage uh, because what's happening is it's squeezing the, the rotor, but it's not releasing. And uh, just you'll just sit there and build up heat until the point where the caliper locks. I've had that happen while I'm riding and it's a really scary thing. So um, you just want to make sure you know, when you take these bolts out to check your brake pads, one of the things I like to do is, is kind of cock the caliper over to the side and push this piston back in and then push it, you know, pump up the brakes. Do that a couple times. Make sure I've got free travel. And especially on your vintage bikes, the older your bikes are, the more prone you are to having something stick. So, again, I've looked at that on this bike. Everything looks good. Everything functions properly. Uh, so we'll move on to the next system now. While I'm here in the back, I'm also going to do a visual inspection on the shocks. Uh, they're not leaking any oil. Uh, I've looked at them on both sides. I've also uh, set them at the proper PSI. These bikes run great with about 45 PSI in the rear suspension. Uh, pumped up to about 45 PSI. Do not put high pressure air to this system it's got a it's a very small capacity in here what i do is just use like a bicycle pump even if i use my electric air pump i set the pressure the max pressure uh to like 50 psi so that i'm not going to blow out my shocks and uh you know it's just they're they're expensive if you blow them out you, know, you just don't want to do that looking at the front suspension here you notice there is a crossover pipe and then there's only one air valve here. And again, you want to just, you don't want to use high pressure air. You just want to use like a bicycle pump or something that uh, just meters out a little bit of air because these only run like 15 PSI and there's very little volume here. So even a second with high pressure air and you it can be very dangerous, honestly. So never high pressure air in your suspension but these have been set i set these to 15 psi and the honda's come with a special uh, air gauge this is not it but they come with a special air gauge that you can measure this without losing too much air pressure uh, it, it's it measures it very precisely and doesn't lose the air pressure so if you don't have one of those get one otherwise you know if i just do this a couple times with a normal gauge I've already lost all my air pressure out of the shocks. It's that little volume. While we're at the front of the bike, we want to remove the little plastic plugs here that are on the handlebar clamp. I use a razor blade to do that. That's the easiest way to just kind of get under them and get those off. And then we're going to go in and uh, make sure that all of these guys are torqued down properly. Last thing that you would want while you're riding a motorcycle is for your handlebar to come loose. And, man, especially on the older stuff, you don't know who's been working on it. And you just want to make the, sure that these are nice and snug. I've already snugged them down, so I'm just kind of going back over them here. So those are torqued down properly. I'm going to reinstall my little plastic plugs here, and then we'll move on to the controls. The air filter on the CB900 Custom is located behind this cover.
I'm going to remove the spacer and the air filter comes out. And so this one is there's a little bit of dirt on the outside of it. I'll probably go ahead and just replace this air filter, but it doesn't look terrible. And then to replace it, you just reinstall it. And reinstall the spacer. So you have to make sure it seats properly first. And that looks good. With the bike running, we're going to check our lights right now. I can see that my high beam works and my running lights in the front are working. Okay, my low beam is out, so that needs to be changed. I will have to get a new bulb for that or at least check. Sometimes they're not making a good connection on one beam or the other. But I'll check that out and see what's going on. Next, I'm going to check my turn signals. These work. The other side works. Then we'll go to the back of the bike. See that this turn signal is working. See that the other turn signal is working. The running light is working at the brake light. It serves also as the license plate light that is working. going to be checking two things here on this side of the bike with the controls. One is our brake lever action and I have gone in because when I initially bought the bike that it was very grabby and so it would kind of notchy as I pulled it. So I pulled this pin and cleaned it and then lubricated everything with grease. I also lubricated where it's contacting the piston going in and so now my travel is very nice. And then I bled the brakes out and put new fluid in it. So we're going to check. So when the bike is upright and this is level, you can see it's at the upper level there where it should be. It's clear fluid. That's brand new. Uh, we'll also check and make sure there's just a little bit of throttle play here. It should not be much at all before you start turning the uh, opening the throttle up. And I have set that. The way you do that, this is a 10 millimeter and an 8 millimeter. You loosen this up, the 10 millimeter, and then you can just dial the 8 millimeter out and, and set it. Again, you just want a little bit of throttle play. Once you have this set, go ahead and turn with the bike running, turn it from lock to lock, one side then the other, and make sure that the bike does not pick up revs. If it does and you've set your throttle too tight, and that can be dangerous, especially if you're doing a U-turn or something like that. So you want it set nicely so that you've got a little bit of play, but not much. That's factory setting. And over here on the clutch side, we've got the same deal. We want to check our motion on our clutch. And I have greased this pivot point. And I've also gone in and lubricated the clutch cable here 
uh, with just some WD-40. And if your clutch engagement is set right here, you can. that's one of the places that you can adjust it. But you want to set it so that you've got just a little bit of lever travel before you start to disengage. You don't want it just smack tight up against the stop there so that as soon as you pull, it's disengaging. Just a little bit of travel, and then it engages the clutch. And the, the motion should be free, it should not be binding, and it should not be overwhelming. If you've got to be a lobster to pull that, then something's not right. But that looks good. Everything is set there. And if we want to tighten it up, we just loosen this nut and then we can adjust this in or out to get the proper adjustment and then lock this back down. All right, so there you have it. That is how to service a 1980 through 1983 Honda CB 900 Custom. I have several of these, like I said, they are straightforward to work on um, as far as just regular service goes, they're not difficult. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to service a vintage bike uh, just because of the age of the bike and so whereas like on a new bike or a, a much newer bike, I don't have to go in and re-grease my pivot points and I don't have to necessarily change all the fluids in it, on the vintage stuff you really should go through and change all the fluids and, and just make sure that you're working with a, a clean slate there. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below in the comments section and I try to respond to those if people have questions. I hope you found this video informative and entertaining and until next time, enjoy the ride.